This Bible question is an excerpt from our television program, What Do the Scriptures Say? We hope that it will enrich your spiritual life, and we hope that you'll come back to www.scripturesay.com to find answers to your Bible questions. Thank you. All righty, welcome back. Get your Bibles out. I'm, I'm curious to see how Michael's going to answer this question. When and who divided the Bible into chapters and verses? This came to us from an email viewer. <laughs> yes, the an email viewer. An email viewer. We, we tell you that if you live in Arizona, you get preferential treatment for questions and answers on this program, and that's true. I'm not sure whether this is a, an Arizona question or not, but because we have never answered this on our program before, and, and uh, several people are in Arizona are very interested in the answer, I decided we'd answer it. Uh, typically, we do not take questions from around the world and answer them on, on our television program. But um, here's a clue. If you, if you would like to have a question answered on the air, make sure it's something that we've never answered on the air before, and, and you, you, you have a much better chance of doing that. It's a rather complex question. Who divided the Bible into chapters and verses? And there are some apocryphal stories associated uh, with this, quite a legend involved, but originally the Old Testament, before the existence of the New Testament, was divided into 54 different sections by the Jews in order uh, to reference different parts without having to go back and, and uh, read an entire book or, or uh, read an entire section. And according to Acts chapter 13 and verse 15, it's apparent that one section of the 54 divisions was read in the synagogue every Sabbath day. And then later the Masoretics, who were the copyists of, of the Law of Moses and the Old Testament, the, the, uh, they were actually like the Xerox copy machines of, uh, of Old Testament times, B.C. times. They would take manuscripts of the Bible and they would copy them letter for letter, jot per jot, dash for dash. They would make an exact duplicate of whatever they received in order to, to uh, make certain that they were accurate and exact. They divided the Old Testament up into what they called orders, and there were 669 of those orders. The divisions that are found in the Greek manuscripts differ a little from the divisions that are found in the Latin manuscripts, and those divisions are different from, than the Hebrew books that are listed in the Old Testament. Some chapters are arbitrary in length, and they differ from manuscript to manuscript. And they, uh, all of those divisions that are ancient are much different than those divisions we find in our printed Bibles today. The books of the New Testament were divided rather early in their history into certain portions that would appear under uh, various names. And originally there were two kinds of sections called titles and chapters. And the titles were portions of the Gospels. And if you, if you ever run across an ancient copy of the printed Bible, like the Gutenberg Bible, if you ever see it, you'll see references to titles in chapters. And after a title in a chapter, there would be a summary of that particular portion of the Scriptures. The chapters were divisions with uh, numerical notations that are attributed to a man named Ammonius, uh, they, they are not anything like the numerical notations that we have in our Bibles today. And uh, uh, there's a lot of variety in the old manuscripts in the way that they were divided up with chapters and sections and titles and numbers, and they vary uh, greatly from, from location to location and from church to church. The numerical divisions of the Old Testament and the New Testament are ascribed to 
a number of different individuals. Some scholars believe that the divisions of the Old and the New Testament should be attributed to Cardinal Hugo of St. Cher in 1240 A.D. Now, Cardinal Hugo took his uh, preacher students and theology students in 1240 and organized them to, to divide up the Bible in a way that they could readily locate words because they were putting together the, the first concordance of the Bible. You know, concordance is where you can look up one word in the Bible and it tells you where that word is found throughout the scriptures. So Cardinal Hugo's students were diligent in dividing the Bible up into verses, chapters, and verses so that they could locate those words very easily. And I think that's probably a, a pretty good guess as to who was the first to try to do that. Some believe that a man by the name of Stephen Langton, Archbishop, Archbishop of Canterbury in 1228, is the one who is actually responsible for those chapter divisions. But one of the things that you need to know is by the time the Bible was printed and printing came late, uh, there were already established chapters and divisions that, that made its way into some of the printed manuscripts. There are Latin Bibles, for example, that, that have chapters uh, divided into seven portions. And perhaps this is what you'll see most frequently in the old printed Bibles. You'll see a chapter of the Bible marked in the margins with the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, seven sections for each chapter, again, so that somebody could reference a chapter and then tell you where that particular statement would be found by using the letter as a reference. But these subdivisions varied, again, in various places. Our present Old Testaments differ uh, from the Old Testament order of books that uh, were ascribed to the Jewish division. And our New Testament differs from the way that it was divided up early in its history. The earliest printed Hebrew Bibles marked every fifth verse with a Hebrew numerical. Arabic numbers were first added to the intervening verses uh, about 1661 um, A.D. by a man named Joseph Antheus, and the first portion of the Bible printed with the Masoretic numbers, verse, uh, identifying individual verses, was somewhere around 1509, and then in 1528, there was a new Latin version of the whole Bible that was really the precursor to our divided Bible with book chapters and verses. It took the Masoretic verses, marked and numbered them, and it, it was published. And for many years, it was the standard. But there's a dramatic difference. Verses in that particular Bible were three to four times as long as in our present Bibles. The present New Testament verses were introduced by Robert Stevens in his Greco-Latin Testament published in 551 A.D. And then later, Stevens published the Latin Vulgate of 1555 A.D. That was the first Bible that was published with the present books and chapters and verses divisions that we have. Now, I said, Danny, that there was kind of an apocryphal story that grew up about Robert Stevens. The, the story that many people have heard is that Robert Stevens divided the Bible while on a horseback trip from one place to another. <laughs> and there, there's an element of truth in it in that uh, uh, his son, to Robert Stevens' son, testified many years later that it, it was indeed uh, the division of the Old and the New Testament into verses was accomplished while he was, while Robert Stevens was on a trip from Lyons to, to Paris, but that, uh, and, he, and he went by horseback, but that the work was done in the inns along the way, in the, a journey in the, uh, in the uh, 16th century or the, the fifth, 14th, 14th century right. would have uh, taken many, many days. And, uh, but that's how the legend grew up. You know, he, he did it on horseback. Well, he traveled on horseback 
but when he was in the inns, he did, uh, he did his work. In, in closing, let me remind you of something that if you watch this program, you hear me harp on, and I, I will harp on it again and again. It's context, context, context. Since these divisions were given to us by a man, uh, and there was no inspiration of the Holy Spirit involved in that dividing process, there are places where the division actually destroys the thought of the context. And, and because people think that you stop at one verse or another, uh, or stop at a chapter line, sometimes you, you do not get the whole thought. But I am really grateful to Robert mm -hmm. for giving us that division uh, it, it enables us in a universal way to, to point to a specific verse and identify its teaching. And without that, it would be much more difficult. We could be like the Hebrew writer when he quotes Old Testament scripture. The Hebrew writer says, in the place that says, you, you know, um, and you go find that place. Uh, now we can get pretty specific, specific very, about very it. Very specific, yeah. That's the answer to that question. We'll look at another one of your questions in just a minute. We thank you for your interest in what do the scriptures say. We hope that you'll come back to scripturesay.com often for answers to your Bible questions. See you then.